Hello and welcome back to All Spin TV. And today I'm doing, as promised, a car tuning guide. And this is all for you wheel users. Now, if you do use a controller, this guide will work. But being a controller user, you will be able to actually go a lot more extreme with your tuning. As a wheel user, we need to be able to dial these cars in perfectly because each individual car feels completely different on a wheel. Now, as you've seen from the timestamp, maybe this video will be quite a long video, but I promise you, by the end of this video, you will be able to tune your cars and make them do exactly what you want. Every bit of information in this video will be exactly what you need to know. Now, I'm gonna be going through rear wheel drive cars, front wheel drive cars, four wheel drive cars. I'm gonna tell you what each individual of the settings actually makes a difference. The formula to use, it's gonna be a little bit of maths, but trust me, it makes all of the difference. Now, I have built a S1 370Z. Uh, this is running about 700 horsepower. This is for one of my bigger circuits that I race with my club. We also do a lot of A800 races, but either way, it makes no difference. I am going to tell you the exact formula, what you need to know how to tune a car. Now, one caveat to this is it doesn't matter how much power you've got in your car, um, I'm not going to be able to tune out driver error. So if you're on a wheel and you're really aggressive with your throttle um, and your steering inputs, don't, we're not going to be able to tune that out. So the tuning is going to be able to get your car to do exactly as you want it's going to steer a lot better it's going to drive a lot better like for instance this car we're going to slow right down I'm going to pull away second third fourth gear this thing just wants to spin up so we're going to tune that out it understeers quite a lot we get on the throttle and it just say understeers a huge amount as you can see here, we're going to tune all of this out. We're going to make this car do exactly what I want. There's a few little tricks that I've found when it comes to actually uh, the modifications you put onto your car that are going to make quite a big difference as well. So let's shut the knit and outer off. Let's jump straight into this. Right, so there's a few things we're going to need today. One of which is a phone or a calculator. Now don't watch this phone. It's my work phone. It's beat up, but it's got a calculator on it. That's all that matters. The other thing is an understanding of what I'm trying to tell you. So let's jump straight into the window. So if we go into my cars, it gives you the information as well. If you look on the left hand box, it shows you your power, torque, weight, front and displacement. Now the front is what we're interested in. It says 52% over the front. So that means 52% of the car's entire weight is over the front axle. 48% must therefore be on the rear. Every car is different, 57, 44, etc. So that bit of information we need to know. Another thing we need to know before we go into tuning is if we go into our engine and we look at our dynograph down at the bottom in a performance table, it shows you our curve. So red is torque, yellow is power. Now we can see that this particular car has got quite a very nice power, um, smooth power delivery. Now we're looking at anywhere from about five and a half, six thousand RPM up to about nine thousand RPM is our main power band. Now we're losing dropping off torque, don't get me wrong, at the top end, but it's got a very nice power delivery, and that is sort of our perfect area we want to tune our gears to. So if you are in this screen, if you flick your, uh, sorry, if you press Y for toggle, you can see in the left-hand side box again, we have our front weight distribution. So what is important is our knowing our power graph and our front displacement. Now on the screen, I'm going to put a formula and this formula is extremely important. All right. Now, when I first put it up, you're going to look at it and think, what is this? But I'm going to explain everything and you'll get to understand it. It's very, very simple. So it is maximum take away minimum times weight ratio add minimum. And as I said, you would explain, I will explain it. You'll, you'll get it. Now, a few things when we're looking at cars. Now, I do racket, uh, bracket racing. Now, I like the principle of Lotus, which is lightness equals speed so first thing i do when i come into a car is i will add slick tires i will add wide tires and a wide track width i will then add suspension now here is one of the tricks i have found and i've done a lot of research into this trust me people this works perfect if we look 
I'm using drift suspension. This is not going to be a drift build. This is going to be a race grip build. So if we look at the scores, it says 7.1 handling. We go to race, we're at 7.1 handling. You'll actually find that some cars, we are actually got a better handling score on the race, on the drift, sorry. Now the reason I use drift suspension is, if you lose the back end with drift suspension, you can catch it very quickly. And it feels identical in any other way to race suspension. Whereas with race suspension, as I say, it feels the same until you lose the back end. You cannot catch it as quickly or as easily. So if you're in a front wheel drive car or four wheel drive car, it doesn't really matter a huge difference. But I've got to be honest, in every single car, I use drift suspension. This is the same as Formula Horizon, uh, sorry, Forza or Horizon 4. So always use drift suspension. Now, when we go into weight reduction, you'll find some lighter cars do benefit actually keeping a bit of weight in them. And also, when it comes to your um, chassis reinforcement and roll cage, I don't tend to add the full roll cage. I tend to just go with the actual um, middle bar. Now, I always max out my roll bars. Um, so because they're adjustments that we're going to need now in this particular vehicle I'm not using aero if I'm honest I don't really use aero on any of my vehicles not unless they are full out x-rated race vehicle that I need to really be competitive with now as I say with aero it's very easy to adjust it is uh, speed and, it's, um, and, and cornering grip it's quite self-explanatory the more you put onto your rear end though, just remember that that amount of downforce can outweigh the front and actually lift the front of the car up, meaning that you'll cause understeer. So we're going to the um, tuning window. Now, this car, 52% over the front, and we know our power band. As you see, this car was spinning up in third and fourth. We're gonna cut that out. So I always start from the very right on our differential. Now, a differential, to explain this in the simple terms, the inside wheel and the outside wheel, when driving a straight line, turn at the same speed. But when you turn left or right, the inside wheel has to travel less distance than the outside wheel. And now what you're doing is you're going to unlock the difference between both wheels. So the outside wheel is allowed to travel further. Hence, drift cars have a higher differential lock. That will be around about 75% to 100%. Uh, that's why drifters lock their diffs up by welding them so that the wheels always spin on a race car we don't want that what we want to do is we want our inside wheel to just spin a little bit so therefore it doesn't push the rear end of the car rear wide now what i found that this is personal preference is i put race diffs on with drift suspension when i do grip tunes now, a race diff gives you a lower acceleration to deceleration 99% of the time. But what I always do is I will half my acceleration with my deceleration. Now, you're probably asking what is the difference. Deceleration is when I come off of my throttle, the wheels will unlock and allow the car to settle down. If I have a higher deceleration lock, when I come off the throttle, it can lock the rear end up, meaning that the outside wheel and the inside wheel are decelerating at the same speed. But let's not forget, the inside wheel and the outside wheel are turning at different speeds, so you will find that the back end wants to slide. So if you know what lift-off oversteer is, that is what causes it. It's your deceleration. You lift off the throttle and the back end slides out. That is your deceleration setting. Now, I tend to leave my acceleration stock and then I will adjust it as I need be. I tend to find more powerful cars need a little bit more um, and lower power cars you can go with a much higher number because you're not breaking traction so easy. But anyway, we're back to it. Half of your uh, acceleration for deceleration. Your brake, what you can do, we got 54% over the, 52% uh, over the front, 48% over the rear. Now, braking force, as I will do in another video, is actually back to front. It always has been in Forza. So when you're doing rear, um, when you're putting it towards the rear, you're actually putting the braking force on the front of the car. This car is 52% of the front. I'm going to put it 48% of the rear, which means when I'm braking, I'm giving my back wheels a little 2% extra. Um, sorry, we'll do it the other way front. It's 2% extra over the back wheels. Just 
means when I'm braking, the car is now even. I've not got heavy braking on the front of the vehicle. I leave braking for standard. Downforce. Now with aero, as I said, if you put too much on the rear in conjunction with the front, you're going to push the rear down, make it squat, but you're actually going to lift the front of the vehicle up, which means you'll actually introduce understeer. So just make sure that whenever you max it out on the front, you actually want to drop down the rear a little bit just to try and balance that out. Now, this is where the maths matters. Now, your rebound. Your rebound stiffness is the suspension pushing back into the floor. Um, bump stiffness is obviously absorbing bumps. Now we want our bump stiffness to be between 50 and 75% of our rebound stiffness. Now I've personally found on this game that I set it at 55% and when I make adjustments I'll come back and make that diff uh, make a change. Now that's, this is where the formula comes in. So if you, what you do is your minimum and maximum, as I said, now I know that rebound is going to be 19. So it's going to be 1 at the minimum and two at the, uh, 20 at the maximum. So minimum 1, maximum 20. So I'm going to do 20, take away 1, 19. Now you'll find with 99% of cars, this number is always the same. It's going to be 19. So we're going to do 19 times our weight ratio, 0.52 equals now we're going to add our minimum back on add one it's literally as simple as that and our front setting is 10.88 so that will be rounded up to 10.9 now we want to do 55 percent so we're going to times that by 0.55 equals that gives us 5.984 just going to round I always tend to round this down so that would be 5.9 Again, for the rear, it'll be 19 times, now it's 52% on the front, so we're going to do 48% on the rear. So it'll be 19 times 0.48, add 1. And that is our rear. That can't be right, let me do that again. 19 times 0.48 equals add 1 is 10.12. So that'll be 10.1. And we're going to times that again by the same 0.55%, which gives us 5.566. We'll do 5.5. This is the only one where we need to use percentage is on the bump stiffness. The rest is all the same formula. Maximum takeaway minimum times weight ratio add minimum. So our springs, this completely changes car to car. Now damping and spring rate is what makes a difference during a corner. Uh, Anti-roll bars and geometry is basically what makes a difference when we're turning into a corner and out of a corner. So if you've got a car that isn't turning incorrectly, you can adjust your anti-roll bars and your springs, leave your damping. If during the corner your car is unsettled or it's sliding around too much, then we would adjust our damping and our differentials. Now, don't get me wrong, a little adjustment on everything is going to make a difference. But just remember that is the main key, really. Anti-roll bars is when you're turning into a corner and the car is, the chassis is flexing. And then, obviously, damping takes over. Springs make a difference, really, during both. So I don't tend to make a huge amount of difference with a change of springs. Remember this. If you're sliding the rear end, we want to soften it up. Or stiffen the front. If you are under steering where the front is washing out wide, it's not steering as you want it to, we will soften the front up or stiffen the rear. We always basically want to soften up the end that's sliding. Now we always make small increments whenever we do this, all right? So we're gonna what I call one ball or one circle at a time. So I would make an adjustment like this. So it's just in front or behind, depending on what I need. But anyway, we're going to go max to minimum on the springs. So as I said, this is completely different for every single vehicle. Okay, so this one is 246.4 and 49.3. Now, if you've got a much higher numbers, if you recognize next to stiff, it says KGF MM. If you go into your um, settings, you can change 
it to like USA, metric, European, um, and all the rest of it. And that's what gives you an easier number to remember. All right, so you can change it for yourself and make it a bit easier. So with 2464, take away 49.3. Oh, 2464, take away 49.3 equals times our weight ratio, 52, equals add our minimum back on, 49.3 gives us 15179, so 1518, remember our number, 2464. So we go down, 2464, 2464, keep remembering it, 2464, right. Now we do 246.4, take away 49.3 times 0 0.48 for our rear, 246.4 take away 49.3 equals times 0.48 for our rear add 49.3 back on our minimum and that gives us 143.9 now this gives you a base setting for your vehicle and then when we go for our test drive we'll make a little tweaks here and there to get how we want it. Now what I always do is, drift suspension slams the car. I'll put it one up front and rear, just gives it a little bit more travel, a little bit more for the car to soak up. Mexico is quite a bumpy um, uh, tracks and roads. Now, anti-roll bar, minimum and maximum. I can tell you now, 65 on one, it's always 64. So 64 times 0.52 equals, now, what I do is I add one on, so it's 34.28. In Forza Horizon 4, I used to add three, but I find it's just a little bit too stiff on this game. So 64 times 0.48 equals 1.3172. Now, that is pretty much our car set up other than alignment and gearing. Now alignment, we would use our telemetry and that is for our tires as well. But a very quick base setting that I always jump to is 1.6 on the front, 1.2 on the rear. I will knock our front caster down to six. Most race suspension is around about five, 5.5. Now caster, if you imagine this wheel as being our front wheel, caster is the way that the suspension's up or back, leaning back. So the lower the caster, the more you're pushing through your wheel, the higher the caster you're pushing down. So we just want to lean it back a little bit, and that's all the caster means. Um, toe in and out um, can adjust the way that your car really feels. Um, so when we, if, we, if your car's not turning in, and say it's a four-wheel drive car, for instance, what you can do is make your 0.1 out on the front and 0.1 out on the rear makes your car wheels like a banana. So it actually turns in a lot quicker. You'll find for rear wheel drive cars that are towel happy, really towel happy, and you can't quite get it settled down with springs, anti-roll bars, differential tuning, then what you can do is change it to 0 0.3, 0 0.5 out, and it will start taming the back end. But when you do this, you're going to lose some of your top speed, all right? So don't make too huge of a change on this toe in or toe out. Uh, always try to adjust your springs, anti-roll bars, damping and differential first before anything else. And then use these really as a last resort. So just remember, toe out brings the backs of the tires closer. Toe in brings the front of the tires closer. Now toe out gives you a better turning response. Toe in gives you more stability on rear wheel drive cars. Now with four wheel drive cars, you'll have your front acceleration, deceleration, your rear acceleration, deceleration, and your center diff. Now, what I always do, I always have a base setting really for most front uh, four wheel drive cars. I will do a 20% acceleration front, 5% decel, so it's actually less than half. And then my rear will be the standard race differential. And I always leave the lock between the two at whatever it is standard. And as I've set my suspension up and I make my tweaks, if the car's not reacting how I want it, then I will add more power to the rear usually to make it up me be able to power over steer.
So what I'm saying is, is I'd like to have the power to push the back end around rather than pushing the front wide. I'd always rather have a little bit of oversteer in comparison to understeer. Front wheel drive cars now are slightly different. So with front wheel drive cars, everything is done through the front wheels. We're turning, we're braking and accelerating using the front wheels. So we wanna be very gentle with our throttle at lower speeds so we don't spin up very easy. And we also want to be able to have a little bit of one wheel peel or inside wheel spin rather than locking it up and then having loads of torque steer. So what you do is you leave it standard, drop your deceleration to half, do all your suspension tweaks, go out for a test drive. If you find that you're getting torque steer, so you hit the throttle and the front of the car is just washing wide all the time, you want to keep reducing your acceleration down until your inside wheel starts to spin and then basically leave it there. And then you've got to modulate your throttle and be a little bit more gentle on your throttle. So that is an overall understanding of what each of these means. All right, so we're just cap it off basically anti-roll bars is when you're turning into a corner so as you're driving the chassis is flexing um, if you want to make your car steer uh, less understeer prone where you wash out you can soften off the front stiffen up the rear and the opposite for oversteer springs does a little bit of both it's when you turn into corner but also mainly during the corner how the car how the car is settled damping rebound and bump stiffness is, is during a corner. So when you're driving through a corner, is it unsettled, is it understeering, oversteering, and adjusting accordingly. Just remember to soften the end that is slipping more. Now you can do this two ways. You can just soften that end, or you can actually stiffen the other end up as well. You've got to play about a little bit to find what is what you need, all right? So it's always a bit of um, just trial and error when it comes to tuning. But this here gives you a perfect setup for what you need, all right? This is all of the information you'll need. Now, gearing really is a video on its own if you wanna be a master at it, but we know the basics. So we know that between 6,000 and 9,000 is our power band. So if we look in our bar down the bottom right-hand corner, we can see that in fourth gear, we're around about 6,000 RPM. And then up from there, we're in our power band. Now, we know that this car wheel spins constantly in second and third, but we want to catch grip ideally in second. Now, this is quite a high-powered vehicle. So what we want to do is we'll lengthen our first gear over to just below our second gear, and we're going to drop our second gear down to about 5,000 RPM, and then our third gear to about 6,000, well, no, about 5,500 RPM. So by now, it should be catching grip. And then we'll just do a nice smooth curve for the rest in our power band. Now, final drive ratio, we can extend this over to the corner of the bar to adjust before. And that will just lengthen things out a little bit more and hopefully give us a little bit of traction. But this is trial and error. It's a very quick, easy way of doing it. Go for a test drive, see where you're catching grip and adjust your gears to that. Remembering what your... Um, power band your ideal power band is and every single car is slightly different so in this car we've actually managed to get another 10 mile an hour roughly i think in uh, top speed just by making a few adjustments and we've gained a bit of acceleration but now what we'll do is we'll go out in the vehicle and we'll actually test drive it now i we're almost at a 50 50 split so i'm going to drop these down to 30 psi and again we'll see how the test run goes let's go out for a little drive and see how the car feels Right, right in the car. You may find that you'll need to map your telemetry button. My one is the rear uh, bottom on a D-pad. Now, the window you want is this window here. So if you look, you can see your camber. So when we're turning around a corner, we want to basically get that just over the negative. We never want to go positive when we're hard cornering. And use a roundabout for that. Um, I'm not going to go too heavy into this because this will be a 40 minute video but go into a roundabout turn obviously left in the roundabout and if you watch your front and rear wheel you want to level out your camber so that you've got more um, tire contact with the floor now you don't want to allow it to go into the positive you always want to stay about 
0.1 under. All right, so that is how you do it. Your tires are, you don't want no more than 10 degrees from your inside to your outside when cornering. Now, if you look on my the front left, it's just over that, but we just done a quick, like literally locked circle. So when you're going around your roundabout, you can adjust your camber on both your heat cycle and the last window in order to do it. But if you literally just go in at 1.6, 1.2, you can make, you, you can really feel it. We'll be able to go through it. It's getting dark, so we're gonna be quick with our tuning. So we lock first, second, Cool grip in third, so ideally we actually need to lengthen these gears out a little bit more. So what we'll do, we'll just want to get this gear in better than what it is at the moment. So what we need to do is just drive, go over into the tuning car, into our gears. Now we found it's still spinning up quite heavily in second and third gear, just just a little bit spinning in third. So we just want to lengthen it out a little bit more. So we're just going to stretch first over, and then we'll bring in second down a little bit more, and third again, just a little bit more. Then we'll just make a nice arch with the rest of our gears. And we've managed to save over 0.1 of a second off of our 0 to 100. So I think we're going to start catching grip now. So it should be good. Now what we want to do is it's a high powered car. All right, and it's a lightweight vehicle. So we know we're gonna spin up in first and second, but when we're racing, we're mainly using third, fourth and onwards. So what we want to do is be able to have grip in third. So we're going to spin heavily, catch our second gear. Lovely, third gear, we got grip. And what you did find is when we're in second and we're pulling away, there's no spin. It's only obviously when we're quite aggressive with the throttle. Now I'm not lifting, so I just want to prove a point. See, second gear catching grip so we know that our gearing is pretty good right now quite happy with that now what I will do as well I will show you we'll go over to a roundabout in a minute and I'll show you how to quickly run through your telemetry but now what we're going to do is we're going to go for a test drive and we're going to see what the car does now we know it's spinning up in third and fourth quite a lot the front end was washing out now front end's got a good bit of grip towel happy so we just have to modulate our throttle and we'll tune that a little bit better we'll get an understanding of what the car's doing they're quite tight bends quite high powered vehicle which have to be smooth with our throttle to say we're not going to tune out driver error so let's go for a little test drive see how the car feels it's feeling pretty good to be fair definitely catching a lot more front end grip around that corner bit of tail end now what feels pretty good, but we can make it better. So let's oops, skip around this car here and uh, let's jump into our setting window. Now we know that our back end's a little bit slippery, front end grip feels rather good. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drop a PSI on the rear, catch a little bit more grip. Now, if we want to make a quick fix, we could go 0.2 degree in on the rear, but I always use that as a last resort. So I'm gonna one circle down on anti-roll bar so when we're turning in, the back end's got a little bit more grip initially. I'm going to do the same with our springs. One bar. And then I'm going to drop that down one because it was just a little bit tow up in every area, basically. So we're going to remember 55%. So we'll do, once my phone works it out. So we're going to do uh, 9.1 times 0.55 gives us five and that is that now what we could also do is just allow the inside wheel to spin up a little bit so we're going to drop the differential down and we're going to halve it on our deceleration now take in mind high powered car low weight zero aero and it's doing pretty good already so we've adjusted our gears nice in second Feeling all right. Quite a tight bend coming up here. Oh, it actually caught grip there when it wanted to lose it. Oh, that's driver error that. 
So that feels all right. It's feeling pretty good. It's a lot better than what it did standard. It's going where I want it to go. Now what I like to do is I like to have a bit of power. So if I am understeering, I can hit the power and I can make the back end come out and push the front end back into the corner. Like you just see in them two corners. So that yeah, feels pretty good. A little slide. See what it's like in third gear when I come out. Yep, catches gear. Catches grip, sorry, in third gear straight away. And that was me mucking about with it as well. So overall, pretty happy with this straight away. So what we'll do is we'll jump over into the telemetry window and at a roundabout. I'll just quickly run you through what to do. So back over to the roundabout. And the roundabout is down the bottom left-hand side of the map here, just on the start of the motorway. And on my uh, wheel, I've got it configured as the bottom D-pad button. Now what we want to do, we're going to look at the opposite. So our front left-hand wheel and our back right-hand wheel, outside wheel. And we're going to basically push on, get into third. We don't want to go drift. We've got to be nice and smooth with our throw, quite a high-power car. And we're going to keep going and pushing on a bit more power and keep turning the wheel until we basically can try and see what gives out first. So we can get our front to go down to zero with a bit of understeer. So we know really this is about the maximum here, about 0.2 on the front and about 0.4 on the rear if you look. So we actually, that means we want to drop that on our settings. So 0.2 on the front, 0.4 on the rear. So we go into camber, so front would be down to 0.2 and that would be the 0.8. But as I said, we don't want to go into positive, so I'm going to put one back on the pair of them. And then we'll retest that again. And what this is doing, this means that when we're cornering, we've got more tyre contact patch with the road, which means more contact with the road, more grip we've got. So we're going to keep on pushing. Now the back is at point 0.2, and I'm actually getting understeer, and it's starting to level out at zero. So we're actually pretty much there, I think. Just before understeer, about 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and the rear is the same, about 0 0.2, 0 0.3. We probably could actually lose that one that I added on. I think what we'll do is we'll then leave that there. And it should give us about 0 0.1, 0 0.2 when we're driving. Too much throttle. So we're starting to push wide now. There we go. About 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and the rear was at 0 0.2. So yeah, we've basically balanced it out. If I quickly check our tyres, where are we? 238 on the outside wheels, and 236, 320. So about 13 degrees on the inside wheel, and we're pretty much bang on on the outside wheels. So we know our camber set up perfect. That is how you set up camber. Now tyre pressures is slightly different. An overinflated wheel will have more heat generated on the centre of the tyre. An underinflated wheel will push more on the outside edge of the tyre. But if I'm honest, I tend to drop my wheels to about 30 degrees. Uh, if the weight differential is quite far out, over about 4 or 5 percent, i.e. if it's got 54 on the front, 46 on the rear, I might have one PSI heavier, uh, more on the heavier end. So I'd have 31 on the front, 30 on the rear. I'll just tend to find as a base that is perfect. So as I say, we have gone through all of the settings now. I hope you get a greater understanding. As I say, a bit of a long-winded video, but you needed to know all of the information. It was all relevant. So as I, as I promised at the beginning of the video, you definitely will know more now than what you did. You have the formula to use. I'll leave it as I said, I would have left that on the screen all the way through. Um, and you understand what each individual one does. Now, we're not gonna be able to tune out driver error. So if you've got a thousand brake horsepower, lightweight car, you're always gonna be towel happy if it's rear wheel drive, all right? And it's, you know, you've got to be sensible with our tuning. Now I'd say I tend to tune all my cars to A1 or 
uh, AA100 or S1, and me and my friends we race out of tracks with them, and we have we have basically a lot of fun at that sort of grip. We don't need any more power really, and it's right and down the motorway doing drag tunes and stuff like that. But anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, please share this to anyone you know with a will, um, and hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow. Um, please press the like button if you liked it. Any information you want to know, I always tend to hit my comments up every day, if not every other day at the latest. And um, yeah, I always try to answer and be as helpful as I can. So anyway, hopefully the next video will be a how to drift video. Um, and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.